Hey, what's up my fellow YouTubers? Elric Ferris, Editor-in-Chief here once again on the Motherboards.org YouTube channel. Okay, Sandy Bridge is launched and we've brought you a couple motherboards so far after that launch. Now, the board we're reviewing today is the new Gigabyte P67A-UD7. This is actually the highest end motherboard that we've actually reviewed yet here on the video channel. We've had some better ones maybe over on our written channel, but this is actually the highest end motherboard that we've released for the new P67 Express chipset. So let's go over the layout of the motherboard, what the features are, how it performs, and at the end of the day, why you'd want to buy the UD7 for yourself. So here we take a look at the actual motherboard designated the P67A-UD7 from our friends at Gigabyte. This is one of their ultra durable series, which means that basically it's made out of really good parts. The motherboard actually contains two times the copper of another motherboard. So the motherboard actually weighs quite a bit and having a lot of copper on the motherboard can actually extend the life of the motherboard and sometimes even make it run just a little bit better. So we know that this motherboard is based off the P67 Express chipset and it uses the new second generation 1155 processors. This is the new i7, i3, and i5. Some of you guys have left notes saying what's the difference between these processors and the first generation core processors? Well, the graphics are embedded in this. And some of you guys have also left things saying that the graphics were already embedded. Well, no, they weren't. The HD 3000 graphics or HD 2000 graphics were always off the chip prior to this. So all of the new second core things have a graphics chip embedded in them. Now, the P chipset does not support graphics, but the H67 chipset does. The motherboard that we're looking at today is the P67, which is based more for enthusiasts. So, in memory, we get 32 gigabytes of DDR3 memory. It will use up to eight gigabyte sticks, which are not currently on the market, but they will be on the market later on this year. Also, we have one power connector here, which is our eight pin and one 24 power connector here. Um, it's a little bit hard to see over here, but this is actually the power reset button for those people who actually, you know, use their board on a test station. This could be good for you. You can restart your board as often as possible. So let's move down. Down here, I have a single 1X PCI 2.0 slot. Now this slot's very close to the rear IO and to this ultra durable and the heat pipe right here. So it might be very picky on what cards you can actually put in right here. This motherboard also has two 16X slots and these are true 16X even when run in crossfire mode. Then we also have two 8X slots and these will also run single eight, single eight, and we have two standard PCI slots. Now, the motherboard will support triple SLI and Crossfire X, which is pretty good. Since these guys have made a deal with everybody, everybody's happy, you can use whatever video cards you want in, in the motherboard. Okay, I'm gonna spin the motherboard around just a little bit here. These right here are, this is your triple EI triple E. If you wanna put this in and use an external connector, you just go ahead and remove that and plug it in. Moving around the board, you can see you have external connectors here for both your USB and the breakout box. And then these are all the connectors for connecting your power and stuff from your, from your case onto your motherboard. This right here, I'll spin it around again. This is a little power switch thing that gives you numbers. And like other motherboards we've tested, this gives you a digital readout telling you what exactly is wrong with your motherboard. Moving right here is the Intel six gigabit connector. And right here is the Marvel six gigabit connector. All right, so moving over to the rear I.O., we see that the motherboard has a legacy PS2 plus mouse combination port. With this motherboard also has six USB 3.0 connections, this being one, two, and three with a total of six. Both of the LAN connections on the board are brought to us by the Realtek chipset. Most of the other motherboards we took a look at, they actually had a Marvell or an Intel chipset as well. The audio is brought to us by the ALC889 chipset, which features eight channel audio and Dolby surround sound. With that, you get an optical connection, which is SPDIF and a coaxial. There are also two combination ports on this motherboard. These support the new SATA 6 gigabit and also USB 2.0 standard. So you can hook any one of those devices into here. The ones above it, these are your standard USB 2.0 connections and they're compatible with both the one and two versions of USB technology. On the top here, finally, we have the IEEE. We both have a mini and standard IEEE port. So now that we've seen how the motherboard is laid out and the generic features of this motherboard, now let's take a look at some of the features that are very specific to the Gigabyte P67A-UD7. So now that we've seen all the features, all the specifications for the board, let's now check out the performance.
So we've now seen how the P67A-UD7 performs, how it's laid out, and all the features that this motherboard has. For the P67 series of motherboard, this motherboard is definitely an editor's choice. It's one of the highest end boards that we've seen here yet on the motherboards.org YouTube channel. You get gigabytes warranty, the motherboard has a pretty nice layout, has plenty of features, and the boards come into market at about $239 to $249 manufactured suggested retail price. Now, you may find this out in the market for cheaper. Don't quote me on prices because I only give you the MSRP. But at the end of the day, the new Gigabyte P67A-UD7 is a serious editor's choice here on the motherboards.org YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.